What's up everybody, this is John with John Fair Innovations bringing you another math lesson. So today I'm going to teach you the difference between rational and irrational numbers. Now before I get to the video, if you enjoy it, do make sure you hit that thumbs up button, leave a comment on maybe another math topic you'd like me to tackle. If you really enjoy the video, do make sure you hit that subscribe button so you can stay up to date with all the videos as they come out. Now, I get this question a lot because often people talk about rational and irrational numbers, but if you're not familiar with mathematics or the terms, they can be kind of a bit weird at first. But it's actually a very simple concept. So I'll start, of course, with our rational numbers. Now, the rational numbers are just numbers that can be expressed as a fraction. Now, if you're not aware, all a fraction is, is just when we have a numerator, so a number on the top, we have our divisible line, and then we have a number on the bottom, which is our denominator. And it works basically as division, so the numerator divided by the denominator. So whole numbers will always be rational numbers, because they can always be expressed as a fraction. Think about, let's say, the number 3. Well, can we think of two numbers divided by one another that would give us 3? Well, 6 divided by 2 would give me 3, so the fraction of 6 over 2 represents the number 3. So that's why whole numbers will always be rational numbers. And it's the same as if you have it in its negative form. So if you had like negative 5, you could have negative 10 divided by 2, and that would give you negative 5. Rational numbers can also be in the form of decimals as well. So if we take the number, uh, let's say 0 0.487, what we can actually do is we can actually express this as a fraction. So um, we can divide this by 1,000. So if we have 487 over 1,000, so 487 divided by 1,000 would give you 0 0.487. So it's still being expressed, or it can be expressed, as a fraction. So it is, in fact, still rational. And again, you can do this with negative numbers as well. Um, you can actually do this as well with recurring numbers. So if you get, like, let's say, 1.6 recurring, and what we mean by recurring is, in the decimal part, it will just repeat over and over again. So in this case, 1.6 recurring is 1.6666666 going on forever. This actually can be expressed as a fraction. So if we have 5 divided by 3, that would in fact give us this particular number, the 1.6 recurring. So again, this number then is actually rational. And again, you can do this with negative numbers as well. So if you had negative 0 0.1 recurring, for example, this can actually be represented as negative 1 divided by 9, and you would still get uh, your negative 0 0.11 recurring. So negative 1 over 9 is a fraction representation of this number, so therefore it is still rational. So that's briefly what rational numbers are. Irrational numbers are the opposite, which means that of course they can't be represented as a fraction. And you will get some strange numbers, and of course our most famous one of all is in fact pi. Now I'm not talking about the pi that you eat, I'm talking about pi as in pi, the 3.14 um, and it goes on forever. So if we take, let's say, pi, so 3.14159265358 and it actually keeps going on and on and on forever. People actually have competitions about how far they can actually remember, how many decimal places they can remember of pi. So um, I'm not obviously that clever, <laughs> but there are some people who can get very, very far with it. But this actually can't be represented in any sort of fraction we have. Now, there were approximations to pi in the form of fractions, but we'll just I'll show you how actually they don't really represent the true nature of pi. So one of the most famous ones that we have was 22 divided by 7, which was said to be an approximation of pi. But if we look at it, it only actually gets to the second decimal place. So we have 3.14, which is the same as what pi is, but then the next number is 2, which is different to 
what we have in pi. So this actually only represents it to the second decimal. There is also another one that, um, that is quite common, which is 355 divided by 113. And that actually gets us a lot closer. It does get us to six decimal places. So we get 3.141592, but then our next number is nine. So then we sort of are uh, not quite where we should be the next number. And of course, pi is in fact six. So these are approximations, but as you can see, they're not actually being represented to its entirety as a fraction. So we define this then as a rational. And again, just like our rational numbers, irrational numbers can be negative as well. So you could have negative pi, for example, which you can say, for example, is a representation of a rotation in the negative uh, or the anti-clockwise direction. So we have negative values for these. Um, another famous one that we have, of course, is Euler's number, which is um, E. It's represented as E, and that's 2.718281, and it goes on and on and on and on forever. And it, again, that's another number that can't be represented as a fraction, so it is rational. We also have a lot of our surds, and surds are just numbers that have square roots. So um, a very common one that you'll come across if you do a lot of mathematics is, of course, the square root of 2. This is also, in fact, irrational because it can't actually be represented as any sort of fraction. It's uh, 1.414 and it keeps on going on and on and on forever. Um, you can also have numbers that can get a bit crazy. So you can have like 3 multiplied by... Uh, the square root of 2, so this is another third. Again, that won't be represented in the form of a fraction, so that one also would be irrational. And the same as well if you had, say, the square root of 3 divided by 2. Again, uh, this would also be irrational, because it can't be represented as a fraction. So there you have it. Hopefully you enjoyed that. The biggest difference between rational and irrational is just simply whether it can or cannot be represented in the form of a fraction. Well, hopefully you enjoyed that. Do check out yourself. Do have a look at different sort of values, different sort of numbers to see whether they are rational or rational, um, because it's a great way for you to understand at a higher level what numbers are and what they're actually doing. But always stay safe, be kind to one another, and I'll see you next time.